Hello YouTube, this is Learn Tutorials. Welcome to your 20th GIMP tutorial. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how to use the Curves tool in GIMP. Now, to use the Curves tool, you got to go to the Colors tab and hit Curves. And this window should pop up. You're going to see a grid, a lines, bars, um, and buttons everywhere. Uh, it might look complicated if you've never used it before or you don't know how to use it, but uh, it will like it really won't after you've used it for um, a short while so anyway uh, yeah so it's easy to get used to um, basically what this does if you just click on the grid you can see it's gonna give you this curve and this anchor on it that looks very similar to the paths tool probably is the same for all I know but um, if you drag it around this grid it's gonna make like a whole bunch of weird effects like this looks like a horror movie and this looks like somebody poured bleach all over a photo of Ronald McDonald looks very washed out anyway what um this really is doing though is if you look at these two bars on the bottom and on the left um this bottom bar represents the original image and the one on the left represents the new one so what this means is that um the bars basically also represent the pixels uh, in the image. The black ones are all of the shadows um, in the image. Like, uh, for example, like you know, an actual shadow, I suppose. The middle middle um, portion of this bar are the midtones, and um, you guessed it. These ones right here are the highlights. I think I told you this before in another um, tutorial, but. Um, anyway, same thing over here, shadows, midtones, highlights, but what this really is doing though is, for example, let's say I take this uh, anchor right here and let's say I drag it down, so now it looks like really strange. Uh, let me just drag it here actually, this is a good example. What this is doing is it's taking all of the pixels in the image that between the shadows and the midtones and it's transforming it or mapping it into um, a shadow. So basically, um, it's taking most of the pixels in the image and making them darker. But for the remaining highlights in this portion of the bar, it's actually just making um, it like gradually go from dark to light. So the darkest pix, I mean the lightest pixels, are basically going to stay the same. Yeah, if I do it like that. Um, they're going to stay the same, but, um, anything in between is going to get gradually dark to, you know, uh, pitch black almost, or, so this is very high contrast in the image. Let me show you another example. Let's say I raise this up like this. It's going to take all, actually all of the pixels in the image, but it's going to take the shadows and the midtones, and it's going to make them gradually lighter, but it's going to, I mean, sorry, shadows and highlights make them lighter, but it's going to take the midtones and then it's going to make them, it's going to really boost the brightness. Uh, as you can see, the midtones, if you look on the grid, they go exactly right up to uh, the beginning of the highlights. So uh, it's making the image brighter. Now, if you hit reset, obviously it'll reset. I pr probably should have explained that before. Uh, preview, you know what that does. Um, let me see. Um, another thing, you can have multiple anchors too. So you can do some weird stuff um, like this. Um, this will take, you know, the pixels right here, make them brighter. It'll take the uh, brighter pixels and make them darker. It's some weird stuff. Um, so you can have multiple dots too. You can have as many as you want, actually. Um, another thing I want to talk to you about is that you can actually drag these two dots that are default that you start with too. So you can invert the colors by making the brightest ones the darkest ones and vice versa the darkest ones then become the lightest ones. Um, so yeah, you can fully invert the colors like that. Well, actually not the colors, the value technically if you're using the value channel. Uh, another thing, if you want to have a preset, like for example, if you want to apply this to a whole bunch of images, uh, you can make a preset right here, I think. 
Um, I'm not going to mess around with that right now. But anyway, um, if you look closely at the grid, you can see this little um, spike like at a heart monitor in like a hospital or something. This represents the um, like a uh, close concentration of like all of the um, light, all of the highlights. Um, because the background is white, so are the sleeves, and so is the face, and I think the um, collar right here, or not a lapel, but like a collar, I think. Um, those are all white, so basically 75% of the image or higher is probably um, a highlight. So that's why there's this huge spike right here. Um, if there was like a very dark image, there would probably be a spike right here. Uh, Mid-tones would probably just be... I don't even know what that would look like, but anyway, uh, you get the point. Um, for example, oh, actually, wait, if you hover over the image, you'll get the color picker. And let's say you click on like the white background or something. You're going to get almost in the middle of the spike, actually. Um, and you're going to get X equals 244. Now, this number can go up to 255, I think. Um, it's just showing you how bright it is, 255 is the max you can have, 0 is the darkest. Um, so for example, you can just click on a pixel, click on the hair, ooh look, it's 180, or you know, on the hand, that's actually really bright. Or you can click on the eye and you can get like 59, so that's um, like a shadow actually. Um, now another thing you can do is have sample average obviously that'll make a square and then give you the average for it all um so you can do that if you want another thing uh histogram scale whatever that means linear histogram and logarithmic histogram they sound kind of really complicated but um actually you can click here or you can click here it does the exact same thing but um if you hit logarithmic histogram it's going to give you this like a chart so for example you might see some like just spikes not spikes but just these like uh like these not a tower but like what do you call it? just these lines basically just going straight up this means that like um like for example if i uh, click on his eye right there you can see that it matches one of them um, uh, like the higher the um, line the more pixels there are that meet that criteria so if you know this uh, sh like highlight color right here there's more highlights than there are let's say uh, this uh, the um, eye like that or something because um, the longer the line going up the more pixels there are in it so um, depending on you know how you like looking at it uh, I just used linear, I suppose. It doesn't really matter. Um, but if you ever need to, you know, see, um, you know, concentrations of brightness, you can always do that. Anyway, moving on. Uh, curve type is smooth, but if you go to freehand, you can create your own hideous looking abomination just by um, dragging it and doing stuff. So, for example, you can go like that and uh, now the um, the colors in like the midtones and early highlights are now boosted basically uh, brighter so um, if you ever want to drag like that if you oh yeah and another thing if you make something in freehand like that and you go back to smooth it's going to transform it into curves so um, you can always do that another thing Let's say you have a bunch of curves and you want to delete a couple. Like, let's say I want to delete this curve right here. Hit delete, or you can drag it past another dot on the horizontal axis and it'll just delete it. So, uh, this looks very strange actually. But anyway, uh, my point is that. Um, actually, let me see. Okay. You see how this anchor was the last one I touched and it's filled in? This means it's the active anchor. Now, using the left and right arrow keys, if I hit left, you will see that the anchor on the left has now uh, the active anchor. So what this means, that if you, you can just, you know, change it if you want. Uh, 
what this means is that if your anchor is the active anchor, you can hit the up and down arrow keys and it'll actually move the position of the anchor. So you can do stuff like that. How did that happen? That's weird. Um, you can move up and down uh, if you want. And, and I know this is like really slow, um, but it's great for fine tuning. Another thing, if you hold down shift, you can move the anchor down by 15 pixels, which is really nice. Uh, it'll make it a bit faster, and once you get somewhere you like, you can fine tune it from there. Um, let me see. I talked about that. Um, let me see. Um, I think, I think I'm going to go on to the other channels. So there are, are red, green, and blue for RGB. Uh, pixel values. So basically the red channel is uh, representing all of the red in this image. So um, like each pixel has a red value, each pixel has a green and a blue value. So um, it's not just changing all of the um, red pixels as it might um, appear like. It's actually changing all the pixels but changing the value of that pixel. So if that makes any sense. So let's say I move this up. It's going to take the, um, let's see, I do something like that. It's going to take basically all the pixels and it's going to, um, like, no matter if they're a shadow, midtone, or highlight, and it's going to uh, boost the red channel. Uh, for example, let's see if I do this. It's going to invert the red channel. Uh, let me see. How do I explain this? Let's say you have, um, like, so right. Oh, by the way, if you go underneath this line, it's actually going to take away red, which is kind of like adding blue, uh, as I showed you that other tutorial, I think. So, um, so now it just looks like really blue, but um, you know, it looks red and you can have multiple things here. So the shadows become red and the highlights become blue, as you can see. So uh, the darkest colored pixels are becoming red. Um, and the other ones, like the white background, white face, white uh, collar thingy there, uh, and the sleeves, they're all becoming blue. So. Um, Another thing I want to talk to you about is let's say you have something like that. And let's say you're working on another channel. You can see that the line stays the same. So you can work on this channel all you want. Ooh, that looks horrifying. Anyway, you can see that there's two different lines here. Uh, if I hit reset, it's going to reset them both. So let's say I just want to reset the red channel. Just hit reset channel. If you actually hit reset, both of them become the same again. Uh, same with the green. Ooh, that's creepy. Um, so, you know, you get, get the idea of how ugly this is. So, anyway, there's only one more channel here, and that is Alpha Channel. And let me see how much time. Okay, that's a lot of time. Um, I better hurry this up. Anyway. So the alpha channel, obviously, yeah, this already has an alpha channel on it. Um, let's say I just delete, erase some of this uh, image like that, for example. And I go back to the curves tool to the alpha channel. Um, I think black represented the most transparent pixels and white represented the most uh, seeable or opaque pixels. So. Like, I think if you invert this, yeah, as you can see, it's going to swap it or invert it. So all of the um, transparent pixels then become the uh, non-transparent ones and the opaque ones become the transparent ones. And actually, um, I had better really hurry this up. But anyway, uh, as you can see, you can, uh, whoops. So for example, if you just move this, you can see um, that in the transparent area, it looks like it's growing and then shrinking a bit, growing, shrinking. 
a bit. So, um, yeah, so just remember that um, these for the alpha channel, this doesn't actually represent curves. I mean, not curves, it doesn't represent shadows and midtones and highlights, it just represents how transparent the thing is. So, um, or you can do freehand too, in case you want to make something really weird like that. So that's basically it for this uh, tutorial, I'm pretty sure. Um, I'm going to include a link in the description to a very well-written article on GIMP.org. Also explaining this in case you, you know, need more help or you want to understand this tool better. It's kind of really complicated. Um, and um, I think I explained everything. Uh, if you have a question, just comment it and I'll see you in the next tutorial.